Hello everybody, welcome to this video. It's a continuation in the series on Great Expectations. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and give the video a thumbs up, it really does help. So today I want to talk to you about one of the themes in the text and that is the theme of time. Of course any story takes place throughout a set period of time but Great Expectations takes place over quite a long period, 17 years, with another 11 years elapsing between the penultimate and final chapters. But time does not affect all equally, and this is what makes time an important theme in this novel. So most of the characters in Great Expectations don't change much during the course of the story. So in a way, we see Pip, who does undergo great changes, navigating through a fixed landscape and learning to deal with it. Of course, this effect is heightened because we don't have access to the internal life of any character other than Pip, but most characters don't change much. Only Pip's perception of them changes as he himself changes. Pip's circumstances change radically more than once. We first meet him as a poor orphan boy taken in as a son by his kindly brother-in-law and his rather less kindly sister. He then has to take the role of a playmate for the spoiled adopted child of an eccentric heiress and becomes discontented with his life. Next, he, his visits are concluded and he has to revert to being an apprentice blacksmith until released from this by a mysterious benefactor and the promise of, as the title tells us, great expectations. He then lives the rather aimless life of a young gentleman waiting to come into in his inheritance until meeting his benefactor, discovering to his horror that it is not Miss Havisham, which means his relationship to Estella has not been plotted out towards their marriage, and that the man is an ex-con whom the newly gentrified Pip looks on ironically with revulsion. The final transformation that he makes, of course, is to decide that he doesn't want Magwitch's money, at which point he can start to repair the strained relationships in his life and take charge of his own future as an honest man of business. So as I've said, around Pip, the other characters mostly stay as they are, and any change in their relationship with him is because of the changes in Pip himself. So although Pip is, it exhibits some characteristics that are not very admirable at times, particularly in relation to Joe and Magwitch, it's worth noting that the essentially good main characters, Joe, Biddy, Herbert, Wemmick, Jaggers, all like Pip, while the essentially bad main characters, Orlick, Drummle, don't like Pip. Uh, Compayson, though possibly the worst of the lot, has no significant direct interaction with Pip. Now main characters who have um, become bad through circumstances, like Miss Havisham, Estella, Magwitch, all grow better after interacting with Pip. And Pumblechook, of course, is not malicious. He's just full of himself and pursues self-interest like the other traders of the town. The same is essentially true of the likeable minor characters, in particular Startop, uh, Matthew Pocket, Clara, once she knows him, and Clarica, liking Pip, while less likeable characters, Sarah Pocket, Georgiana, Camilla, Raymond, the Avenger, uh, Trab's boy, all for their own reasons dislike him. And when you're analysing a character, it's really interesting to look at how other characters interact with your character that you're studying. So, you know, you can analyse a character through what they say and do, through what a narrator might tell us about them, but also through how others react with them and, and how others seem to respond to them, what they seem to think about them. Now, that's quite interesting in this story, as I said, because the positive characters seem to like Pip, the negative characters not so much. There are themes interwoven into this story, but the important point is to see how these factors translate into Pip's development through time. When answering any question on any theme, it's always wise to mention changes in time. Uh, say what has changed from the start of an extract to the end, how a character has changed within the novel, or how events bring about change. Exam boards have said numerous times that um, some students write about characters as if they are the same all the way throughout a text and we can certainly explore that uh, in this answer. Now remember context, even though you won't be asked specifically to say anything about the times in which Dickens wrote the novel or Victorian beliefs or how ours differ, you'll actually be expected to say something relevant about context, not as a separate add-on 
but to explain a point. For example, if you were talking about Jaggers giving Estella to Miss Havisham, you could mention that there were no child welfare uh, at the time. Orphanages were overcrowded and cruel, and a girl like Estella would likely be left of being on the streets or be sent to the workhouse. So although we would think what he did terrible today, possibly, in the context of the time he probably saved her life. If you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check out Mr. Bruff's Guide to Great Expectations, available for £3.99 at mrbruff.com.